jeepers you're listening to smash or pass hi everyone welcome to another video on the jv hey <laughs> millie channel <laughs> we are as always joined by rihanna hello in today's episode we are going to be reviewing spooky space kook from series one of scooby-doo where are you so this is a really exciting episode i'm actually looking forward to reviewing this one because isn't this like the only episode that's that we've done at least so far that's just the name of the villain or am i wrong i think um, you may be right because You're like right. this is one of the first like funko sodas we saw for scooby-doo and everything so i just feel like i mean there's the mummy too but it isn't a standalone villain no so i feel like this is a big one yeah i'm excited and so for those of you that haven't seen this episode for a while it's time for rihanna plot summary Okay, first I want to say very quickly that I believe that this is the last episode that aired in 1969. So technically they had to wait a whole decade for the next episode. You know, 70s, new decade. Um, anyway, so if you haven't seen oh, wait, this is episode... Oh, that when everyone started doing drugs and stuff? Oh, gosh, Jamie. Oh, Jamie! Really? Love, man. <laughs> 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 He's so Shaggy will never be the same again. But why is Shaggy called Shaggy? Because of his shaggy hair and slightly oh, shaggy hair. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so the episode begins with a mysterious aircraft that appears and it lands behind some trees when a mysterious glowing ghost in a spacesuit walks down the road, stops and unleashes a manacle laugh. Maniacal, maniacal. Yeah. Maniacal. Manacle. Manatee. Isn't a monocle? Like manacle, a... like manic is crazy. <laughs> I thought it was maniacal. I don't know. It's bonkers. But the, the, let's the, have bonkers laugh. A kooky laugh. A kooky laugh. <laughs> Shaggy, Scooby, and the rest of the gang drive down an old country road when they discover they're running out of. Gas, petrol, whatever, you know, terminology and stuff. Um, so they have to stop. They park at an, an old farmhouse and end up talking to an old farmer who at first mistakes the gang for reporters. He explains the situation about the spooky spacecraft and this, the gang decide to stay to investigate the airfield that's supposedly haunted by a ghostly alien with a cackling, shrieking laugh. Will... <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh, JB. <laughs> Will they survive? You know, we worked with some awful woman one time <laughs> that used to laugh like the spooky space kid. Oh gosh, she did. Oh my god. And it was the it literally you'd just be there. You worked at the opposite end of the corridor and you'd just be sat at your desk going, hearing this. <laughs> <laughs> That was it, all day, every day. Oh, God, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. JB, he was your friend. What? Are we, we're what? talking about the easy woman, right? Not, yeah, you yeah. used to dance together a lot, we you did know. We not dance together. When that person had, had a leaving party, you two were dancing together in the middle of the, f of the office floor. Okay, here's how it went, okay? So this is a little sneak preview at the next episode, um, A Night of Fright is No Delight, right? And <laughs> I'll lead to it. One time I was doing a little dance in the corridor, which involves me, <laughs> stood like a star, moving down the corridor. I don't know how I'm going to visualise it, but just imagine. No, imagine, like, you know the kind of dancing where you're all stood in a line holding hands? Oh, yeah. So your arms are stretched out either side. JB was doing that, but on his own. So his arms are still stretched out. He was still dancing <laughs> along, but he's doing that on his own. And this woman saw. <laughs> and so she just thought that he was, like, kind of trying to do this thing where you dance in a line, but no one was joining in. So she just walked up to him and held his hand. And as soon as she touched his hand, JB went... <laughs> <laughs> So two people came running out of no. So then the woman was that scared by JV screaming that she then screamed. But she like put her hands up. You know like how the Phantom Shadow puts his hands up and oh, like yeah. does that clothing. She did that. <laughs> oh my two god! People came running out of their offices to see like who this woman was that was screaming because they thought that JV's scream was also that of a woman. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 
And that was the tangent, but it was good. It just took me back. <laughs> okay, so everyone, what do we think of the spooky space geek? Well, oh, what the villain? Yeah, just aesthetics. Like, what are we feel thinking, feeling? Maybe Rihanna can go first. Okay. Um. So, first, a little fact about the aircraft. The aircraft soundtrack is used in both seasons openings and closing sequences. You can hear it. Um, and also, I discovered whilst researching for this episode, the Spooky Space Cook isn't actually the monster's official name, but it was given like as the official name because so many people just used it because it was the title of the episode. So it's unofficially officially the name of it. And this monster scares the bejeebas at me. The love, <laughs> the love, the the look, the flashing. I, oh gosh, it scares me so much. But that's also like a good thing because the whole back then, you know, the the artwork was so good, and I feel like the setting and everything just looked amazing, and it really set the tone. And I, I do want to quickly ask you guys because. Back when we reviewed Scooby Doo, where are you now? That was called the special, but I was the only one who smashed it, and everyone else. I think you're the it. only person that's ever seen it that smashed it. And nobody, nobody <laughs> looked it. The the best part in hindsight was probably seeing our main man Mitch. I was going to say the best part is that <laughs> it finished. Ending. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. And that it didn't do what the treasure map did to you, where you think it's finished and then it hasn't. It just comes back to torture you a little oh, bit more. Oh, and my, my mortal enemy, according to you two, Seth Green showed up. Was he a mortal enemy? <laughs> uh, you tell oh, me. Oh, yeah, you that was like, me. oh, my gosh, I forgot this. Yeah, so yeah this yeah, is like a good you thing. You accused me of that. It, just because it made Velma even better that she got this character development <laughs> with this character, it made her even more endearing. Everyone started being even more Velma Simps. Uh, hand on heart, that is the worst <laughs> moment of doing this podcast ever when you two took the narrative that I didn't <laughs> like Seth Green because of that. It's ridiculous. I mean... You you also, back when Alexa Bliss got married, didn't fully like the fact that he was very close to Sam and Sean Geller. I didn't say any of that. You you weren't overly happy. You were like, why is he so close do to you, Geller? Do you not think he contributed to what you think is the worst Velma creation because it was too good? No, no, I was... Uh, disappointed. Okay, uh, let's I, leave it there. You're no, disappointed. No, 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 it's I, negative. No, no, he doesn't no, like no. him. See, see, this is it. This is it. <laughs> Let me go on record. Um, I really wanted Sarah Michelle Gellar Daphne and oh, we know Linda Cardellini Velma <laughs> to have oh the iconic God. scene in 2002, right? Gross. But because the test audience didn't like it, they had to You're bring perf. in Velma's friend to reassure the audience members. Don't worry, she's not a lesbian. She's she's heterosexual. Okay. And so from that, they had to go, okay, now let's make sure we don't go through this again. We need to give Velma a boyfriend in the second one so it's even clearer. And so all I see is Seth Green being there. For all he's good and charismatic, I love him in Buffy, he's a good guy. I just think he was only in the second one to further reassure people that Velma's yes, not a lesbian. but JB, isn't it better that they brought Seth Green in to do that than try and do one of those really annoying Velma shaggy romance stories? Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. So I don't even hate Seth that Green. if it's done well, I wouldn't oh, it's mind. It's never been done well. <laughs> if Shaggy it was and Daphne done well. was done better in like a five second oh, scene in Mystery and Girl. That was good that stuff. That was good stuff. That was, uh, I, I, I'm more in support of that. Yeah. Honestly, like, about, and then reading the Daphne and Velma books as well, I'm now more in support of Daphne and Shaggy than Fred and Daphne. I'm more in support of Scrappy and Daphne. Oh, no. But he marked his territory. JB, you're a creep. JB. Technically, James Gunn is a creep. No, you're a creep. Who's creepier, you, me or James You're Gunn? the only person James that watched Gunn. that entire movie and went, yes, Scrappy peed on Daphne. <laughs> oh my god! No one else has taken I that away from that, that movie. No one else has been like, yes, good for you, Scrappy. Everyone else is like, ugh, <laughs> Scrappy, why do you do that? Ugh, yeah, like, they kicked him out. No one likes okay, Scrappy. It... Scrappy can never be in any Scooby stuff ever again. That's it now. Was Whereas it... you're all like, yes. Was it or was it not the highlight of Scrappy Doo's career? What's a Scrappy? 
I'd say that mm. I'd say <laughs> that helping in the sports department of the girls' school was the highlight of Scrappy's career. Oh wow! Well, yeah. well, you went downhill. After I would that. like to do that again. That's you been a creep, JB. No, if it was like Hogwarts. Og. What? Hogwarts. What? What's Hogwarts? Hogwarts. Oh, that's better. What happened, JB? Come on, your parents <laughs> paid for private school to get this pronunciation right. I said. Og <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and it's not even Hogwarts, it's 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 Grimwoods, isn't it? Or Grimwards or yeah. Grim Grimwood. But so bottom line is my disdain <laughs> for Seth Green in the second movie is completely rational and it's nothing to do with any nah. daphne so, I You're guess so I'm bring bringing it back to my original point this before we all pull out. Life. No, JB. Oh. You, I told to some news earlier that made you very very happy and by early i mean like a little bit after midnight so <laughs> come on it's not the worst worst day when you can imagine good what's news. going to happen oh that good news okay good news wait what good news <laughs> the good news oh, i'm saying the recording the good news wait is it bring brain no what good news oh, oh that's what I'll i thought you me. meant yeah that's what i thought oh wait wait what was it the the the, the 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 delivery oh yeah no that oh yeah yeah, yeah. well let's yeah. see what's the first thing we have the wait who did anyone give their opinion imagining on the that cake here? that will easily make uh, rihanna did she said it was like the most I, I terrifying the villain <laughs> and then i think we're up to either me or you i'd say that i think because my mind's quite brief and then you it was related to where are you now that's why we got speaking about mitch what yes yeah um well i was um going to say is that you know the like farmhouse that scene reminds me of in um where are you now you know the ending bit where it's like the where they claim it was the first episode but she was cut but they like lightened it and made it a bit more clean it looked like the same kind of house hmm. maybe it was the rigby house maybe that's what I want. That's what I want. So I'd say because I'm you talk about yeah. spooky, spooky space. Cake. I want to say that like if we use the two variants for this like sodas, yeah, yeah. That normally the space cake in itself is a very creepy villain, but to then have the added element of the red flashing lights and stuff, I'd say made it even creepier. Like I think it was good enough just as the one, but then it got even more terrifying. The good villain. That's good. JB. <laughs> I don't think you I didn't think you'd like it because you're very anti. Oh no no, that this is almost where my good feedback for this episode's going. Like yeah, this is gonna be controversial, hate, let me tell you. You hate aliens. Anything to do with aliens, you Oh hate. no, no, no. Okay. You like Mac let, from Agents of Shield. Let's clarify this. Oh no, I can't swear. Okay. Um let's whoa, move whoa, on whoa. what I was gonna say. No, no, swear. No, swear. no, no, swear. no, no. Do no. It. Do okay, it. so the aliens in the alien in is it invasion invaders the alien yeah. invaders because the aliens that yeah. was hilarious i have never laughed so hard as to when those silhouettes turned into actual green things it just looked like it, it was so funny like as shadows they looked relatively intimidating and then you transition and just do this like green like slime thing and it's just funny you're you're nasty they're good. They're good aliens. No. Oh, that was terrible. Like, I'd actually never seen that movie all the way through until we started doing Smash Your Pass. And now I know. <laughs> yeah, but you can listen to Audrey Wazalewski's but, voice in Oh, that. yeah, but yeah, she's amazing. She's incredible. She's the best thing that happened to the movie. No, 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 no. She, She's one of the best things. Oh, that no, because there's Crystal and Amber. The best thing to happen in the movie is. um. Daphne. Oh god. Okay, we're moving on, JB. Your opinion of the space game. Oh no, it isn't. It's um what's his face? Lester. <gasps> Lester! Yes. Lester. Did they experiment on you? <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of experiments, I guess it's time for me to give my spiel about the spooky space cook. Um so I I, I think that the kook is a good villain. I don't think he was ever one of my favourites um, watching this, because again, I was a bit too scared to watch the first series for whatever reason when I was really little. I guess I was just a bit of a... I can't say that word. Um, I, I can say soy boy, right? I was a bit of a no, soy you were, boy. You were young. You were young and it scared you. Yeah, it frightened me. I had to hide behind the sofa. You were a 
a little a little kind of you were you're a scared person. Yeah, so you? I watch normally the one that, that goes, got it all together for a brand new show. When it was that intro, I knew that I was safe to watch. When it was Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? I knew that I might be a bit too scared. Oh, what about what's new? Like, I'm telling you, when we get new. to that, I'm, I don't even need to review them. I can tell you it's a smash for like every episode. Oh, no, not all Just episodes. because I don't of think the you'll music like at the start. You won't like the alien episode. Uh, and the music makes it worthwhile. That song just makes me so happy. Like I could be in the worst mood in the world and just hear the like what's new song and just be so happy. Would it save you from Vecna? It would. Ooh. It, uh, that could be my song, you know. <laughs> what the, what a, da, da, da. Like, obviously, da, 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 if you've not seen Stranger Things, you don't get the reference, but like that would be my like life-saving song, I think. I want to be Vecna. If I could do my life again, I'd be that. Nice. And it wouldn't take very long either, because it's just the opening bit is so amazing. Oh, it's that Rich Dickerson, isn't it? He's a very good guy. <gasps> What's that really cool music? The really funny music video at the end of the Scooby Doo in the Scooby Doo two thousand two <clears throat> bonus features. But Land of a Million Drums. That's it, it's yeah. just oh, Matthew when... Lillard in the Mystery Machine. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I love that music video so much. What about the highlight of his career? Oh, it's the highlight of that movie for me. Sorry, JB. So I, I like... You know, Geller's Boots are a great part no, of the no. movie. I think 2002 was just my year for Scooby. Okay. So, Spooky Space Cook is great. I love Aliens. It's like something from Doctor Who. I'm there for it. Not one of my favourites, but I love that. And their laugh is iconic. I want it. But the only thing that ruined it for me is that awful trollop that we had to work with come on then really okay so we see the space coop we then see the mystery machine at night they get to an old airfield and see spooky footprints oh yeah i like these footprints what do you think to the setting of an abandoned airfield i think that's quite cool do we have any in england yes why do they have them in america when america's not that old it still has history to it. So what's it from? The Battle of the the Battle of the Germany. It's... Hitler. This is a really random factoid, and it's Civil War. They did. They had a civil war, didn't they? They did. The Republicans and the Democrats. Not only that, I don't know how relevant this is, or even whatever. But like, when there was the when World War Two happened, there were certain locations in the UK. Where they set up like fake oh. bases, almost like, isn't it something that you see in one of these? Like, almost like, I think the scene that I'm thinking of has like this inflatable tank that they cover up. Isn't it Dad's Army that? Possibly. Shows but yeah, they have like these fake bases, so it's made to look like there's like a military yeah, like base inflatable in there. Inflatable tanks. Oh, yeah. And there was one of those near where I, like in the wall, there was one of those near where I lived. And Gran's, you know, my Gran, her parents, were part of like a support post for it or something. Is your gran older or younger than Bob Singer? Younger. So did Bob Singer see the war? Yeah. So maybe he knew about these airfields and that's why they're so accurate. Well, I'm not even sure that it would be, like, it, it was possibly a real one, but I was just saying there was some that were set up just to almost be like stage ones. Oh. That obviously had no real purpose, but they were still like made to look like them and obviously if it had no purpose then they wouldn't be used after that makes me very happy like i say that's probably completely irrelevant to this it's probably not it at all but just a little tangent there for you yeah i like it i like it okay so honestly this is the episode where i have the fewest notes i've made for anything because it then says weird spaceship weird pig a very strange spaceship. I noticed that there was a man with a very big gun in this episode. <laughs> and it yeah. made me a bit nervous as someone from the UK. Uh, but I guess it is what it is, right? It is, it's Murica. That's Murica for Murica. you. It's Murica. Murica. For Murica. 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 That's Murica for you. Are you throwing um, American on us? Murica. Why? Mer I don't know why they have guns in an abandoned airfield. You bullied though. me for doing an American accent yesterday when I wasn't, didn't you, JB? I didn't. Wait, what? Wait, what? Why did you do that? Me? Or Millie? You. You. You know... Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, my voice, I was just a little bit happy and you're like, huh, you've gone American. Like, oh, why man. am I being put on... No, because... 
Okay, hear me out though. Oh gosh, I'm scared. <laughs> when you Very scared. when you used to be happy, you used to do an Australian accent, which is a very, very sexy accent. Not saying that American isn't, but I'm very used to the American accent. And I've only heard maybe two Australian voices in my entire life, and it's like Chris Hemsworth. So you can understand I more. mean, your sister-in-law's also from Australia, so... Well, who's my sister-in-law? Well, she's the same relatives as me. Don't, it's just a bit weird, JB. Oh, no, she's yeah. not Australian. Oh, no, she's not Australian, Australian. Okay, good. Like, this is going to make weird. things weird. What I mean is... Uh, this is an example. This isn't. This isn't anything. Oh, I'm scared. But we I'm interviewed really someone called Adele K. Thomas, and that was a thick Australian accent. Right, you're a creep. No, it was a good accent. No, because you like. Okay, so I wasn't in this interview. Oh. And after this interview, you like. I, I was like asleep. I was, I'd like been asleep. No. I was ready <laughs> for work and stuff. I was like, so how was the interview? No. And you went, oh yeah, she was kind of attractive. Oh, you, oh. no, you cannot. I need to edit that out. That's ridiculous. Why say and that? And then she's got a really nice voice too. You're so on trial it. It's an Australian accent. You're so on trial You can't compliment looks and a voice. Don't you dare. Oh. This is, this is, this is, this is something. Me off trial? This isn't something um, for the podcast. This is so who, you, you mentioned it, not me. Well, okay, okay. Collectively, one day, we will do a reaction video to the interview. And if you can honestly tell me that I'm wrong, then then I'll concede. Are we agreed? Um. <laughs> I can't believe you said that in an episode. Oh, well, you, you, you complimented a voice, and obviously, sort of complimented no, a look, like, and then a voice is kind of like, you're like child. Australian. So I'm imagining like a female Steve Irwin, like wrestling crocodiles, saving endangered species, oh. with dressed like Karen Gillan from Jumanji. Like, that's what <laughs> I, that's an image I had, not of them particularly, but of an Australian woman, just kind of. A snake comes in, they karate chop them, and like action woman, because I'm a feminist. Um, Rihanna! Okay. <laughs> Hi! Um, so, fun fact about this episode, and also technically it ties into the last episode, which make sure you watch that. Um, so, this is the 15th episode, and the last one was the 14th. Well, the 14th one, which was, <laughs> I really forgot a name, uh, Go Away Ghost Ship. <laughs> Was is everything okay? Yeah, JB's just been JB. Oh, <laughs> um, still. Um, well, who else Go away, Ghost Ship was. <laughs> Mark Spector. What? No, the spooky space kook. No, you're um... more the creeper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> No, no, don't do the space kook laugh again, JB. You've already done that impression. <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> all I've got left in my notes for this episode is unmask to get the land cheap. That's right. it. Let's be well... constructive. Let's be constructive. Rihanna. Hi. I've made a list of everything that the gang refers to the spooky space cook as. Um, yeah. Would you have you made a similar list, or are you aware of a few that you can propose to us? Um, you really I... put her on the spot here, you know. <laughs> uh, I, oh my god, um, I haven't, but I do have other facts. Um, can you show us? Can you share with us this factoid, please? Okay, so the first one is um at the. This episode was produced to actually be the 14th episode, and the last episode was actually produced to be this episode, but they swapped it around. Um, then also, I what I noticed about this episode is that Fred actually agreed that they should leave and like go away, and usually it's Shaggy and Scooby who like run away, but Fred was all for like leaving this, whilst Shaggy actually identified two clues from uh i think it was the fresh food in the fridge as well as uh the projector and the microphone in the radio tower so they kind of roll reversed in some ways i think on that point that shaggy is the most underrated character in scooby-doo 
I genuinely yeah. do. Like, I feel like they're just used as the comic relief and they're just seen to be the scared, kind of goofy one. It's like, there's so much more than that. Like, like you say, they notice the clues here. We were watching an episode of What's New a couple of days ago and, like, it was something where they'd wanted to be at a certain place and they were like, you know, okay, we need to do this. We need to work out who it was. They just have so many really good moments and I feel like when their character's explored as much as it could be again, I'm always going to keep going back to this, but the Morgan Baden book, just how they developed Shaggy, it was so yeah. good. Like, they are the most underrated character for me. There's so much potential there for them. When are they going to do a third Baden book? It's written, it's just waiting for the release date and it's making me sad because it should have been so long ago. They should release it. I don't know why they don't release it. Well, that's a discussion. If they don't release it, I'm actually going to be so upset because those books are incredible. If they don't release it, I'm going to... Yeah. <laughs> okay, back to where we were. So, Bye. Australian accents. No. No, no. no. So I no, have my, my list. JB being the creeper. Yeah. <laughs> okay, your list, JB. I'm, I'm ready. So we have the outer space ghost. Okay. Um. Oh my gosh, you've got so many notes. The gro the goony ghost from outer space. Um, and I think that's it. I did have a new one, but I, oh my I... Gosh, you've taken so many notes for this. I don't know what there was to say. Because it, it means the world to me. There's... For me, it was just a creepy, like, ghost skull alien thing. With well... something that looked like it should have been in, like, wacky races as a ghost <laughs> ship. To be fair, the closest that we're going to get to a live-action version of this so far is that episode of Doctor Who in the library. You know, um, with Donna Noble. It's what? a library after we close. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought that there was something you had to say then. Or I thought that I knew just a, it, you were just doing a bit. Oh, that was gold. <laughs> Speaking of goals, this was adapted into um, a, a gold key comics adapted this episode um, and they, uh, it, I think it was like Scooby-Doo Are You and issue number four. Oh. Well, I need to find some of those gold keys, but they're so expensive. You could get one, Rihanna, and you could give it to me for Christmas. <laughs> No, I'd keep it for myself. Someone. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about the reveal. So the UFO is a mere projection. Somebody wanted to buy this land very cheaply. And, oh, here's interesting. Every time we see, well, most times we see the ghost coming back to life after the unmasking. But then it's revealed to be Scooby pulling a prank on everyone. This time it's Fred. Fred presses the button that does, like, the kooky cackle. Yeah. And it scares Scooby, so it's a bit like he kind of Spider-Man's him. It's his revenge. So yeah, that's kind of my my bit. You're so you're, you're, you're going to say something. To say, it's going to be controversial. I want to keep it till the end of the episode because it links to the next. Oh no, I'm going to say it. okay. Something that's really fun, and Rihanna's going to really appreciate this, I believe. Yes. Is this episode was about getting the land really cheaply, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. You're not doing this. And We're going to have enough of this in the future. So, in the next episode, we're <laughs> going to be reviewing A Night of Fright is No Delight, yeah. which is the episode that was used for Scooby Natural. <laughs> and not only did Scooby Natural kind of use that episode, but they also used the premise of things about being getting the land cheap, which is what was used in the episode yeah. directly before. Yes. Yes, so, yes, yes. I just wanted I to you, say Mary. there was a really good link there. I love you, Millie. I adore <laughs> you. I adore you so much. I'm going to marry you. I'm not going to marry you. I really love you. That's good. Do you not appreciate the reference, JB? You were like, oh God, when I started speaking, I thought I thought that was a, a really good thing that they did, like tying the two together a little bit, like no. Yeah. No? Oh yeah. JB, cheer up. I don't know what this natural is. That's my thing. I don't know You've what You've got natural. a Scooby natural cushion. How can you not know what it is? <laughs> 
I just don't. I don't believe in it. You don't, don't deserve that cushion to be saying stuff like this. I don't believe in it because it didn't have Crowley in it. Okay. Oh, I can't really. Can I say no? Mm. I yeah. I don't know if I it's can like say. It's like a roller coaster ride. <laughs> so but... verdicts. Me. You. I smash the spooky space okay. cook. I think it's a great episode. Very sci-fi. Very spooky, and I love it a lot. Millie Millie. I'm you... gonna be oh, hated. Oh my lord. Would you smash up past the spooky <laughs> space coop? Pass. Whoa. Hey! Who <laughs> you? Hey! Go I to just... hell, Millie. I, I feel like this, this episode does nothing. <laughs> Go you to just hell. See this spooky... hey! Admittedly, it's a spooky villain. Okay, fine. But then from there, it's just these ominous footprints. And then it's over. Just like random And earlier. like nothing happens. Literally nothing. It's a good villain, but I'd say that the fact that it was like one of the first ones they used to make us like Funko Soda and stuff. I'm going to be hated, but I'd say it's actually really overrated. Oh dun, my dun, god. Dun. You should I have said want to vomit on this microphone. For me, and uh, uh, this is gaining uh, the respect back of Rihanna, the best part okay. of this episode is the cool tie in there. It has a supernatural, how like oh, the thing happened in the okay. episode before. Really, that's and ridiculous. It, it sets it up the Scooby Natural thing. Like, oh, okay, fine. The villain's cool. I get it. But like, the episode was terrible. <gasps> oh, <Millie. laughs> now I need mean, to Rihanna. Okay. Oh, okay. wow, you chose so, violence. I there is an even more bigger Scooby Natural reference because uh, when Dean was listing off all the villains, Sam butts in and is like, oh, and the space kook. And Dean's like, I knew you loved this show. So, I love you, Millie, right now, but I also despise you. <laughs> We're no longer getting married. Oh, JB, it's okay. okay. You can marry me again now. Yeah, Rihanna but, doesn't want to marry no, me. No, but, but you guys need to get married because it's 2022. 2022. Um, for me, this episode, I, I can see where Millie's coming from in some ways. It, I feel like it is yes. very overloaded. Oh but... my god. No, yes. Jamie, wait. I'm upset. No, no, no. Hear me out. Okay, hear me out, please. <laughs> so, this episode, for me, in some ways, you know, I haven't watched it an awful lot because it scares me. I get nightmares from it. I'm a big baby. Um, but it did get a, give us a little glimpse as well of what's underneath, like, Fred's shirt. Because, um, like, when the, <laughs> when the kook uses, like, the leather to, like, grab Fred's belt, we see that he's wearing, like, a full-on blue shirt underneath the white sweater, which created, like, the whole meme that Fred's wearing is, um, like, a whole onesie that's blue and just puts it white like jump over the top which is hilarious um but this episode is it's it's fun it, there's moments where it could get better it scares me for me it is a smash but borderline because the laugh gives me nightmares and what? that's literally the only reason why i would pass it but there's some moments that i really like in this episode and also daphne says jumping jelly beans which is hilarious so. oh yeah <laughs> Yes, I'm happy with Rihanna's verdict. Um, so there's no community news. Boo! Um, Wait, are you sure? You're happy that I smashed it? Yeah. I know, I'm happy that, like, you said that it was a borderline smash, because I feel like that's the uh, closest thing we've ever had to a pass from you. That's ridiculous that it's, it's this, and not the where are you now special. Yeah, okay, admit <laughs> No, <laughs> no, no okay, it's me I think, I think a lot of people after this episode will have lost a lot of respect for you, too. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Can I just try and get it back? It's like, okay, Jamie. The most respect you for you when you said that Daphne kidnapped was only valid if she was gagged. Like, it is, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Every successful creep. kidnapping, as in, actually, technically, I wouldn't know because if it's a successful kidnapping, then they would never see Daphne up. again. I bet. Me, RJ, I'm not going to say that. That's really messed up. <laughs> for me, like, the Where Are You Now? That was the first time I'd ever seen it. So for me, I wanted to watch it. Like, that's the reason why I wanted to smash it because i know i was going to watch it a couple more times in case there was some things that i missed and there were some things that i missed the first time around um so that's like the only reason i smashed it it's, it's not that great 
But we Good never reason. thought Scooby's illegitimate children. No, I want one of his children. I, I, I want to. But this episode, it would literally be a, a if it wasn't for the fact I enjoyed it. Mm, like there were parts that I enjoyed. It's just for me, it was that little bit too scary that it could have been a pass. But there were too many things that I didn't, I did like about it. So I hope that makes sense. It's just it creeped Very me good. out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So, so have I redeemed myself. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so, everyone, thank you so much for listening to another episode. Comment down below if you would smash or pass the spooky space cook. And what's your favorite episode of this series is? We've done all of the movies. We've done all of the previous episodes of this series. So please make sure to go through the back catalog. You can find all of Rihanna's social links in the description. Okay, Rihanna! yeah, Yay! in the description. Oh my lord! <laughs> in the description down below. Oh. In the description down below. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, that's that's. Or do you want to wrap it up there? Subscribe. No, Yay! Well, tell them about. No, no, no. Where's our link tree? The link tree is in the description below. Um, when JV puts it there. Um... Well, it's gonna be as if it's out. That's the two other two. <laughs> All of the relevant information, my social links, their social links. What do you post, links to the main. What do I post? You post bonkers pictures. I post pictures of my dogs, of myself that other people have taken, uh, WWE things. Huge WWE event happening in September. So in September, you're going to be seeing a heck of a lot of WWE. And also just like positivity and me loving JB and Millie and constantly sharing their stuff. So... You know, get a double dose of JB and Millie and follow me yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And we will be back with our next episode where we will re be reviewing Scooby Natural. Nice. No, it's yes. not reviewing Scooby. Oh, my God. It's, it's Scooby did Where Are You In and Night of Fright is No Delight and yeah, Rihanna's going to miss it and Rihanna's going to miss it. Hey. No, wait, what? What? No. Baby. No, wait, no, what? No, be your guest, be your guest, no, but also no, rest of the time. Maybe, JB, no. No, am I am I actually going to be missing this review? No, no, yes. I can't, I can't miss it. Oh gosh. Da 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 JB, I'm actually gonna cry. JB, you need to stop. You've you in your time, you've played some very nasty tricks on me. Oh yeah, yeah. No, wait, Rihanna, tell tell them and then we'll end the episode because it'll be our post credit scene. So credits, 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 Rihanna, tell them please. Wait, tell tell them what? About one of the cruel pranks that I did the funniest one though. Uh, for people's it wasn't viewing pleasure. Fun. None of them are funny. No. You upset her like, so many times. Okay, tell them about the collectibles one. I'm going to mention two pranks oh, no. that you've done on me. The first one, um, we had uh, some stuff signed and, you know, sent to us. And we were, we were waiting a heck of a lot, long time. And then it finally got to JB and Millie. And JB's <laughs> thing was, it's completely ruined. The sign script is water damaged. Like, I can't salvage it. Everything. I was in tears on the floor. And um, I was very, very annoyed. And I was in tears and everything. And then JB was like, Help, it's just a prank, April Fools. Then the second one came um like a month ago, was it a month or two ago, where JB messaged me and he was like, Um, so we kind of need to like talk, you know. If you want to take a break from the channel, that's completely fine. We won't hate you. Um, and as it led on, I was like, wait, are you trying to kick me off the channel? He didn't get back to me. I was a mess. And then he was like, oh, yeah, no, no. I was going to tell you that you were off, but it was just going to be a prank. But then Millie, like, convinced me that, no, I shouldn't do yes, it. Yes, I in no way approve of these messages that JB sends. <laughs> um, but did you actually, like, tears cry with the collectibles or Yes. Baby, you're so mean. I'm asking. It's like yeah, an interview. Yeah, you need to. It's like an interview. You should just feel remorseful for your actions. I am remorseful. Well, I will say now that, like, oh my gosh, there's so many things I could reveal that you've said that's upset me, but... 
I'm not going to because I value our friendship, but I swear, JB, I will seriously, next time you prank me. Wait, I can I just make sure I'm I'm not missing a night of Friday Snow Delight, right? Because I'm I don't want to. Is that was that just a prank? Uh that 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 was just a bit. That was a prank. Okay, well I'm I quit. But you might miss it now. <laughs> no, 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 don't quit, don't quit, because friends don't quit. It's a new contract. I mean, they did in 2002. I didn't sign a contract. You, you, you don't you even did. pay me. <laughs> I do. I pay you one good quality joke per month. <laughs> These pranks aren't cool. good quality jokes. They're cruel. They're payment. No, that oh painful, not payment. Actually, can we yeah. can we send like like crazy bones as payment? I've got crazy bones. <laughs> You, you can tell me more. Wait, I'm can not we, going to quit. Can we send Devin some crazy bones? You still need to send him his Maltesers. This is a very um tangent. <laughs> this is a very well, tangent. This is the post credit scene. This is the post credit scene. So, um, hope you enjoyed the post credits. Um, we're alluding to the fact that we're going to be assembling the Avengers soon. Um, so yeah, Iron Man will return. Like, comment, subscribe. You can't say that. We haven't no, seen no. no. Oh no. No, JB. What's the end game? You need to stop saying we are now. <laughs> um, we'll see. We we'll see you next time. Um, that's all, folks. Stay groovy. Stay happy. Don't trust JB. And and do one. Do if you're listening to this, do one nice thing today for someone else. Either compliment them on Instagram. Retweet one of their tweets. But JB, don't prank Rihanna. Um, give some yeah. money to the local homeless people. Um, do one Support. nice thing. Because yeah. if everyone listening to this does one nice thing, then free random acts of kindness will happen. Um, but yeah, I'll see you next time. And be be nice. Be a good person.